you love you, sir. Thank you. Bless you. Can we give a hand to Pastor Donnell, who's not here, and Pastor Sean for the gift their lives are? We didn't see Pastor, but we sure saw greatness. That's a fact. Um, I bring you greetings from Orlando World Outreach Church, and I have a question for you. Is faith alive in this room? Is faith alive at Rise Community Church? Yes, it is, because Jesus is alive. This, if you stumbled in here and thought this was a funeral, you're in the wrong place. This is not a funeral. This is a resurrection party because Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father right now, right now, interceding for us, making intercession for us. I, I am not unstable or dizzy. Uh, I am sturdy and clear because my wife is here. <laughs> my mother-in-law, Varys, is with us. Great to have her. And you'll see on the screen the rest of the tribe, the, the Johnson tribe, um, my girlfriend in the yellow there, uh, and uh, to my right in the pink is my oldest daughter, Krista Johnson, uh, to Lachelle's left uh, with the turquoise, I think that shirt on, that's Kayla, the second daughter, then the third daughter is the youngest on the right, and then the only son is, is to the right of me. And so I've gotten more than I deserve um, with this family. They're beautiful people, some of the best people I know uh, on the planet. And um, if, if I wasn't married to this family, I would want to be their best friend. They're that great. They're, they're that special as people. So thank you for that. And also, if I was in Myrtle Beach, I would come to this church. You guys are a lively bunch. There is faith in this room. And the Holy Spirit is in this room. It's a beautiful uh, presence here. And I just um, want to submit to us things that I have had on my heart as I've prayed for you. Um, and as I've prayed for you and will pray even at the end of this, this um, time together, um, I believe we're living in the days where we need to see miracles. We actually do. And I've, I've seen some here and there. And I guess this is online, right? And so this is not limited to this room. It might be individuals online. Did I do that right? <laughs> okay, thank you. Don't blame Charlie, because this is going right. <laughs> uh, but does anyone have um, an issue with your face, like bacteria, infection, or anything like that? Anyone here online? Um, uh, again, I'm just submitting things that were on my heart, and sometimes they make sense to individuals, and sometimes they don't. Um, so we'll leave that to the side. Um, I believe um, the Lord is healing uh, individuals with issues with their eyes, uh, anyone with issues, eyes or ears. Um, yes, okay. Um, cancer, cancer, tumors. Tumors. Do you know anyone that has these issues? If you know someone, please understand you can stand in the gap. Please. I know it's us first, but if it's not you, circulate through your mind and say, is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Because these are the things that we want to uh, pray for, as well as uh, pain in the right shoulder. And... Um, in particular, the tumor was in the head, pain in the right shoulder, anyone? Um, and then, okay. Um, and then um, um, the tumor was actually, uh, it was specifically in the head. And then insomnia, um, insomnia just can't sleep. Um, yeah. Um, 
and then um, paralysis. These are the things that I know Jesus is healing. Amen. He's actually healing these things. And so what we do is just submit our hearts and our lives to just say yes. Can any of this make, can, can we make these things happen? No, but the spirit of the Lord is upon us. And the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. He was, an, he was walking about, going about healing all those who were sick and oppressed by the devil because the Lord was with him. Blindness, deafness is an oppression. Paralysis is oppression. Insomnia is being oppressed. I believe Jesus came to set the oppressed free. I absolutely believe that. And I also believe that we're in a time where this church um, is going to see harvest. It's going to see harvest. Otherwise, there's no reason for you to be here. You can get what you need from the grocery store or a good mental health seminar. There's a lot of counseling opportunities. We're here for transformation and we're here for visitation from the king of the universe, the king of glory. And if you would, I want to have you stand and we're going to look in two places this morning. We're going to look in two places this morning. We're going to look in Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, and then Genesis 2, verse 7, both in the NLT. Genesis 1, 1 and 2 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord... God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Father, thank you for your word, that your word will prevail by the miraculous power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The harvest that is coming for this church and any church that loves Jesus is a harvest of salvations. It's a harvest of healings. Do you know you're commanded by Jesus to go preach the gospel of the kingdom, to heal the sick, to cleanse the leper, and to raise the dead? We don't see that too often, but that's still the command. It still remains. And so we have a little ways to go to see the full gospel. We thought full gospel meant you, you spoke in tongues. But the full gospel is to walk in the fullness of what the gospel does for the human condition. And so there is a harvest. There is a harvest prepared and waiting for this church. But the only thing about a harvest is you got to, you got to plant a lot of seeds. You got to plant a lot of seeds to see a harvest. And the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. And as much as we know our need for the word of God, I want to focus on our need to be confident in the fact that we also need the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit to confirm what we believe, to confirm what we preach. We're preaching, preaching. We're giving the word. We're delivering the message. But is there any evidence that the message is true by the demonstration of power. It's how we see confirmation. It's how the gospel of Jesus Christ prevailed in the first century. We have to put as much weight on the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit as we do on preaching the word of God. Because just think about this in a very simple way. Everything that exists, there's nothing your eyes will behold that didn't come from the one who spoke everything in existence, from the one who with his miraculous power and the word caused everything to exist. And so we have to put the same weight that we put on the word on the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit. Do you realize our faith is, is established in miracles? Our whole faith is a miracle. 
It's a miracle. Think about it. Any faith that is not confident in miracles is a good TED talk. It's religious jargon. It's spiritual principles that have no power. Everybody's got a good means of communication if, if they're attracting people. But we're not just here for attraction. We're here for traction. We want you to be gripped by grace, transformed through the power of the Holy Spirit, experiencing freedom where you've not been free for a while. When we see in our opening scripture, Genesis, what we see when it comes to the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit is the law of first mention. The law of first mention is when you see an important word mentioned for the first time, that's the most complete and accurate use of that word, not just as a key to understanding its biblical context, but also you see how that whatever that word is, it continues to grow and develop further through the rest of the scripture. So Genesis is called the C plot of the whole Bible because most of what you find in the scripture started in the book of Genesis. And so in order for us to understand the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit, we have to understand the miracle of creation. Can we say this together? The miracle of creation creation shows us us how how every miracle miracle works. works. The miracle of creation creation shows us how how every miracle miracle works. works. And what is that? The Spirit of God hovering, being present, the miraculous Spirit of God hovering, being present wherever the Word is declared and acted upon in faith. Wherever the Word is present. So you find Genesis 1. We see in the first mention of the Spirit of God, the imagery of is of hovering, the surface of the waters signifying the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit and in the beginning of creation when none of us were here we see him he was before everything everything before your job before the cynic before the unbeliever before any work of darkness around us he was there at the beginning hovering the act of hovering implies to care to care. He wasn't just idling by, just, you know, twiddling his thumbs. The Holy Spirit was hovering. He was caring, giving attention to. He was anticipating something about to go down because I know what the Father has planned and I'm just going to hang around long enough. So when it go down, I'm down. The Holy Spirit cares. He gives attention to. He's anticipating. But you got to ask yourself, why? Why? Why would he care about a thick, dark mass of nothing? Why would he give attention to something that is chaotic and confusing and meaningless? Why is he anticipating Anything good coming out of the worst possible scenario, the worst possible conditions. These are the worst possible conditions. We would have washed our hands and said darkness, emptiness, vanity, meaningless, nothing. I'm done because we do that in our lives when situations hit us that we don't have faith for. We do it all the time. We just say, well, I'm done. Do I have a witness? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. How many people during the pandemic said, I'm done? They just got tired because the world got too chaotic. It's too formless. It's too empty. It's too meaningless. It's just a space of emptiness. We felt it. Why? Why do you care about something that has no reason for you to care? It's because this is the plan of the good, good father. He's always planned to call those things that are not as though they are. 
to actually show us the expression of his love and his kindness and his power to actually create everything that exists out of his existence. Everything that exists came out of his existence. He loves taking things that are chaotic and out of order and dark and formless and meaningless. He loves taking all these things. Why? Because he does his best work on the canvas of darkness. We need to see the light. But he looks into the darkness and sees what is not and say, watch what is. Because it comes out of him. You think about it, the imagery of hovering over formless and empty and void and dark and meaningless things wasn't just that creation. He's still doing it today. Do you realize that he's still doing this today? He's still doing this today. March, uh, uh, March 12, 2022, I was sitting in a hotel room preparing to go to the airport. And I said, Father, what are the secrets of your heart? And he says to me, I live in Orlando. He says to me, Rikers Island. So I stopped, Googled Rikers Island because that word has never come out of my mouth. I ain't never been in jail. And I don't know anybody in jail right now. I got some homeboys that might be in prison in Florida. But you know, that ain't my story. And I'm thinking, what does this have to do with me? What does this have to do with me? So I Googled it and found out not only was it a bad jail, I thought it was a prison. I thought it was closed. That was my hope that this is closed (laughs) and this prayer is closed. It was open. And not only was it a jail, it's one of the worst jails in the world. So now I'm like, what this got to do with me? And he gave me a whole paragraph and sent me on my way and said, you're going there. I want to answer. I, him, the father wants to actually answer the questions that no one has answers for in that dark place. I lived for five months on Rikers Island in an RV. Five months. Working with the who's who for crime in New York City. You Google these cats, they're from different gangs. Any day could have been a bloodbath. But what I realize is that when something comes from the father's heart, he about to change the human heart. It didn't become a bloodbath. They became brothers, 15 of them. The first group, I baptized 11. The second group, some of these boys are carrying heavy, heavy cases. I'm not talking about bubble gum under the desk. I'm talking murder, conspiracy to commit murder, gang violence, gun charges. Like this is big boy stuff. And I grab them in their face and I tell them I love them. They don't even know what to do with it. Except be changed by the fact and the chaos. You talk about chaos? Just come with me sometime. I'll show you chaos. I'll show you we're done. I'll show you darkness. I'll show you the mass of nothingness. And it was into that place that the father said, you're going to go there because I do my best work in dark places. I do my best work where it's impossible. You're going to see the possibilities. This last group a few weeks ago, I baptized 10 of them. Some of these cats speaking in tongues. One of them actually prays his whole housing. 20 guys. Never been done before. Praise with the whole housing area because he's, he's one of the leaders. The whole housing area praying in the jail. The COs are scratching their head like, who are you? What is going on here? The whole atmosphere has changed. It's still violence. It's still a very troubling place. I'll be back. I was just there a week and a half ago going back in a couple of weeks because I can't stop doing what the father said to do. And when you understand this idea of the hovering, the the, the spirit of God and the word of God working in concert together, because the word of God is the divine truth and the authority to actually give clear instructions in the Holy Spirit confirms the word with miraculous, transforming, illuminating power. You can't even read your Bible without the Holy Spirit. You realize that? It becomes a book you put down because there's not enough good information that makes sense to you. It's all against your will if you read the Bible. Read it long enough, you'll find that this is everything I don't want. Forgive? 
70 times 7? It's everything I don't want. Why are you still reading it? The Holy Spirit is active in your life, helping you to see this is useful. This is powerful. This transforms you. This frees you. This unlocks your cage. This establishes you in a peace that can't be explained with human reason. You look at how the the, the, the spirit of God and the word of God work together. You got to believe this is working in me. Can the church say, man, this is working in me. We have to get out of trans transactional religion. We're just passing off information from one person to the next. No, we have a life giving, beautiful work of the third person of the Trinity on the inside of us. He's saying, would you let me out? Would you let me out? Would you let me out? Don't keep me caged up in unbelief. Don't keep me caged up in your doubts. Don't keep me caged up in your fears. Let me out. I created the whole universe. You don't think I can recreate it? Of course he can. Listen to things like this. Jeremiah one twelve. he said, you have seen well. I, I'm watching over my word to perform it. Back to the mother and the child. When you're a good mama or a good daddy and your child is that age, they start walking. You don't just say, go ahead, bump your head, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe y'all did. Y'all laugh pretty hard. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is a recent parenting <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> You watch that baby. He just like you watch that baby because you don't want him to bump their head. Do you realize that the father is watching over his word? He said, I'm watching over it. And sometimes we just kind of read our Bible and move on with the regular old life of weariness and pain. But trust me, you plant this seed in your heart and you plant it other, paper, uh, other places. He said, I'm watching over my word. I'm going to perform my word. I'm going to do what no one else can do. It says in 1 Kings 8, 56, no word has failed of all of your good promises my goodness Matthew 24 35 heaven and earth will pass away but my word is never going to pass away you know why this is important because you and me were created put on this planet by the word and by the spirit your mama had you but the word and the spirit created you may I have that time please that's how you get here but how were you created well, you were created with no sin in your body. This might be strange, but there was no sin in your body at creation. It passed down through Adam, but how were we originally? What was the intent of man? No s- sin. Well, strong, no sickness. You see any sickness in Adam? No. That's how we were supposed to exist for all of eternity. And then God says, don't sin. And they sin. (laughs) And when they sin, what happened? We went from divinity, the unity in divinity, divinity and humanity united together In glory, the majesty and the glory that was on man are beyond words, beyond stunning, beyond spectacular. There's no word for it. And when man stepped outside and actually sinned, we see mankind deteriorating ever since. We used to live like seven, eight hundred, nine hundred years. Y'all know that, right? Okay, so the glory just receded like a wave. Okay, so I can't put glory on death. That's what God said. I'm a, I'm, I can't put glory on death. And our physical bodies were holding stuff we were not created to hold. Sin and sickness deteriorated us. And then we eventually die. Why? Because spiritually we're already dead if we're apart from God. We're already dead spiritually, so it's just false suit. So when you think about how we got to this place, what was the sin that brought us there? What was the sin that got us there? Here's the sin that got us there. It wasn't sexual immorality. It wasn't drinking and smoking. 
It wasn't lust and perversion. It wasn't even murder and violence. You know the sin that destroyed our relationship with God is this. The serpent, the one whose tongue is split, said this. He can't be trusted. Created a question. He can't be trusted. He didn't really mean what he said. And as soon as you start looking at the Bible and not trusting what it says, he's whispering to you. And not only does he whisper to you, all of a sudden now he contradicts what the word says. You shall not die. You're not going to die. You can just go ahead and do that one time. It's okay. You don't have to forgive. They don't know how bad you've been hurt. You don't have to. All his plan is, is to keep us separated. Why? Because if we're separated, we have to find another reason to exist. And all the reasons we give our, ourselves to exist are not the reasons for our existence. He want to make sure you never get back to the reason for your existence. It's to carry his glory once again in your body. Yes. 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 We only see miracles when we see someone act on the word of God, on the word from a messenger. This is the Old Testament picture. And you can read it. I, I'm, I, have to get, I have to get going. Basically, it's a widow whose husband was one of the prophets. And he, she, she goes to Elijah and says, my husband's dead. The creditors want my sons, which would have been her welfare. She would have just been depleted, had nothing. And he says, what do you have? And he says, and she says, I just, I don't have anything except this little flask of oil. That's all I got. And he says, go to your neighbors and get everybody to give you all their jugs. Give you all of them. And all I want you to do is start pouring. Just you and your sons, close yourself in the room. I just want you to start pouring. Just start pouring. Keep pouring until they're all filled up. And so she did that, kept pouring, and she finally said, to her, all of them were filled to the brim. She said to her son, go get me another one. He said, there is no more. And all of a sudden, the oil stopped. She goes back to the prophet. He says, sell that, get uh, 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 the money for it, pay the creditors, and you and your son can live off the rest. How about that? And you got to say to yourself, she was in a situation that was chaotic. She was in a situation that was confusing. She was in a situation that was dark. Anybody hear me? Yes. And so what did she do? She went to the messenger with the word of the Lord. She didn't have a Bible. She went to the one who was carrying the Bible, who was carrying the word. And so she went to the word instead of, you know, calling everybody, uncle, auntie, y'all pray for me. She went to the word first because she said the same word that created everything is going to be the word that speaks to me. And when she got that word, he told her to do something that was so silly. Silly. How you take a flask and pour it in your jug? Come on, somebody. That's just not good math. How's a little bit going to feel all of that? Well, when you act on the word, the supernatural, miraculous power of the Holy Spirit is going to confirm the word. All she had was a little bit. She had just a little bit. Sometimes you got a little bit of strength. Sometimes you got a little bit of faith. Sometimes you got a little bit of finances. If you start pouring it out based on the word of God, if you just start pouring it out, he'll pour in more because he has more than you can pour. He has far more than you. Pour what you got and watch him pour what he got. The miraculous power of the Holy Spirit is always hovering. He's always present where the word of God is being presented and acted on in faith. All she did was acted on her faith. You know what's amazing? You realize this is faith because no one's ever done this before. She didn't have a Bible to read and say, oh, I remember the other woman whose husband died. I remember her. She, she did this, so let's do this again. 
We look for paradigms to try to control our circumstances. She was completely out of control. Everything was chaotic. Everything was backwards. Nothing made sense. And if you're looking for reason, you're going to reason yourself right out of a miracle. You're looking for it to make sense? Forget about it. We only see miracles when someone acts on the word from the messenger, but also on the living word. Jesus. You got messengers who speak the word, but you talk about the one who was at the beginning. He is the living word. If you listen to what he says, you'll see what he's saying. We want to see what he's saying first and then, then okay, yeah. Oh, I feel healed. Jesus didn't die for your feeling. He died for your healing. He died for your healing. You got to actually believe it before you see it. Think about it. Luke 5, 17. On one of those days, he was teaching Pharisees. Again, everywhere there's chaos, confusion, and darkness, and enemy, the bondage, sickness, disease. Watch the same two things happen. They always show up. I think the word and the spirit are attracted to dark places. They're just attracted to depression and fear and anxiety and mental health and emotional break. They're just attracted to poverty. They're attracted. Because usually those circumstances, we don't have many options. It's when we have options that we give ourselves options. We pray, but if you don't do it, Holy Ghost, I got me another one, two that I can do. Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. What does this say? What does this say? And, can y'all read? Read with me. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Can we do this together one more time? And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. What is happening? Jesus is in a place preaching. I think it's in Capernaum. Too many people inside. They can't even get to the, the, the four guys with a friend through the door. The place is packed. Crowds. Jesus is delivering the word that created the universe. He is the living word. And these four friends said, we can't get him through the regular way. How are we going to get our friend in? Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, I got a plan. Let's tear the roof off. <laughs> Let's just tear the roof off. Just tear the roof off. We're going to tear the roof off because if we can get close to the one who spoke the worlds into existence, I know he's going to recreate some stuff in my friend's body. I know he's going to deal with my friend's situation. Tore the roof off and landed him right in front of Jesus. And the first thing Jesus says is your sins are forgiven. Why? He was dealing with the chaos in his soul before he was dealing with the chaos in his body. The greatest miracle is not me raising the dead, cleansing the leper, and, and, and seeing somebody walk. The greatest miracle is a soul that was in darkness actually come to light. A soul that was dead come to life in Christ Jesus. You think about how it... It says that the power of the Lord was present. Present where? Where was he hovering? Where was he actually active? Where was he caring? Where was he giving attention to? What was he anticipating when Jesus spoke? He was there waiting for Jesus to speak. Are you waiting for Jesus to speak to you? Are you waiting for his word to be confirmed in your life by the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit? Who's waiting this morning? Who's waiting this morning? Who's waiting this morning? He's hovering right here, right now. It's the same everywhere you go. This is happening in Africa and Asia and China. We want to see it in America, but we have to be awakened to the reality that it's only through the living word that the Holy Spirit is going to do miracles. Not because I need. You can be in need, he'll pass you by. You say he will? I mean, look, read the scripture. Just read it. Read the Bible. It said there were crowds. That's right. That's right. You know how many people right. heard Jesus right. and Jesus left and they never got healed? 
These old boys were outside. They didn't say, oh, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe you're going to do it, Lord. I believe you're going to do it. No, they were like, we need to take the roof off and get up under this word. We need to get right next to him and let him know we believe what you're saying. We believe and we're going to act like it. They didn't say, Lord, I believe. They never even confessed their belief. I don't know today if they are believers, but they acted like it. What is faith? Acting like you believe. It's not being a believer because sometimes you can be a believer and you don't act like it. These cats acted like it. They acted like they believe. What is faith? Faith is believing that what Jesus says he will do. His word is true. I believe it. That's what it means. That's all of faith. Don't mystify faith. Don't put it way up there in the air somewhere. Keep it on the ground. Faith is, I believe that what he said is what he will do. Especially if I act like I believe what he said. No. I know I got to stop soon. But you got it. There's so much here. There's so much. Is this helping anybody but me? I am preach myself up another level. Think about it. The cat that was on the pallet. Did they ask him to do that? I don't know. But you don't hear any comment from him at all, ever. He's sitting there. That's why I say when it comes to healing, stand in for your friends. Because the four friends carried him. Uh, we don't know if they asked him or not. Carried him to Jesus. And because they carried him to Jesus, the word and the spirit were present. They knew something's going to happen to our friend. We know something's going to happen because we believe in Jesus enough to affect him. But guess what? The friend had to respond too. Because when Jesus said, get up, old boy. He didn't say it like that. Get up. He said, get up, take up your mat and go home. The fellow never said, oh, no, Jesus, I can't do that. You know, I ain't never walked before, Lord Jesus. You know what, Lord Jesus, I don't know what's wrong with you, but that's going to be impossible because I don't know how it feels to actually walk. Homeboy got up and started walking. Why? Because the word was present and alive and it was living. And same way the word was living, the Holy Spirit was caring what the word was saying, giving attention to what the word was saying, was anticipating what the word was saying. As soon as it saw faith, he saw faith. All of a sudden, bam. Do you realize this? You cannot be saved without believing in miracles. You realize that? You can't be saved. Think about it. You put your trust in someone you never seen. Anybody seen Jesus? If you raise your hand, I'm going to see you after service. I need to know all about it. I, I want to know. I got questions. I want to see him. It'll help me. You can't because you're believing in somebody you never saw. Oh, and not only that, you believe he's going to do what's never been done in your life before. Your life has never been changed for eternity. You believe he can do that? You don't see that that's a miracle? All based on what? Not what anybody said, but what his word says. If God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. You're doing all this on a word, on what the Bible says? And for some reason, you never say, well, what if it don't happen? Even though there's no evidence from the past that it should happen. Your life ain't never been changed for Christ. But when you hear the word, you don't say, oh, you do it wholeheartedly. And guess what? It's a miracle because everything you believe, he does. He takes you from death to life, from darkness to light, from bondage to free. He actually does. Do I have any witnesses here today? Has he done a miracle in you? You can't actually have faith in Christ and be saved without believing in miracles. You do realize this, right? Somehow the devil whispers to us when it comes to miracles for for our physical well-being, that's not what he meant. You're supposed to be suffering. 
If I was supposed to be suffering, it would have been the law of first mention. It would have been the way I was first mentioned in creation. And it wasn't. So, devil, you're a liar. You're doing this to me. And you've been found out. And you're no longer my master. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You can't hold me any longer. The same thing happens with healing because of this. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped. So we could be. Anybody know the rest? So we could be. So we could be. So we could be healed. In the same way you believe for salvation. It's the same person you've never seen before. With no evidence that you should believe him for physical healing. Hey, there's no evidence. It's like you, in your sin, you still jacked up. Praying a prayer to a God you've never seen. Why are you jacked up? No evidence that you haven't seen the change or anything, but you believe something is going on right now because I prayed this prayer. And then you see the evidence of it. You pray the prayer of faith to say the same Jesus that I didn't see who saved me is the same Jesus who I have not seen that heals me. He's the same Jesus doing the same miracle in the natural that he just did in the spirit. Anybody believing for a miracle right now? Just say right now, pray this together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that your spirit is hovering right now. And I repent for my unbelief, for my doubt, for my questioning. For my letting the whispers of Satan keep me away from the power of the living word. Jesus, your word says he carried my sins, bore my sicknesses and my diseases. He was on the whipping post for me to be saved, to be forgiven to be cleansed, to be healed. And I speak now by the authority of Jesus' name to sickness in my body. I command you to leave my body. You are cursed on Calvary. I am healed by the blood of the Lamb. I command my eyes to be open, my ears to be open. Right now, sickness, you are not my master. Leave my body now. In the name of Jesus, headaches, you have to go. Infections, you have to go. Bacteria, you have to go. Backache, you got to go right now. You got to go right now. Tumor, you got to go. Cancer, you got to go. Shoulder pain, you got to go. Insomnia, you got to go. Paralysis, you got to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now stand up and give him praise right now. Stand up. Do something you couldn't do before. Let's have a faith that's alive right now. Let's give him a shout beyond what you normally do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.